Ladies and gentlemen, my name is XPC Reaper from Trojan Horse Gaming, bringing you a look at Man of War Assault Squad for the library card. First things first, options menu. What do we have? Quite a lot here. We've got resolution and aliasing, full screen, V-Sync, we've got texture detail going all the way up to ultra, we've got shadows, off low, medium and high. For texture detail, by the way, I should mention this has very low. It's got five different presets. Anisotropic filtering going right down the way. 16, 8, 4, 2, trilinear and bilinear filtering. Model quality can be adjusted low to high or oh, Yeah, low to high. Effects quality can also be low to high. Water shader, you can have ultra, you can have things like the water ripple, you can enable those. View distance, you can change and adjust as you require. Audio sliders wise, you've got quite a good thing. This is really cool by the way. This here lets you change the kilohertz of your mixing her or your mixing rate. Of course 44.1 is of course the uh, standard pretty much for everything. You can have 8, 16 and 32 buffers. 32 I'd recommend. You can have effects, vocal emotes, environment, interface music, game music and speech. You can adjust all of those individually. You can have your difficulty changed. You can enable or disable fog of war. Subtitles, invert mouse wheel auto aiming. You've got a lot of different stuff in this. Multiplayer you can change your name of. You can activate mods and all, but first I'm just going to show you um, what should we do? What mission should we do? I am going to show you the Carantan mission, may as well, for the USA campaign. Now I have played a fair amount of this game and I personally love it. The way this game works is slightly similar to the Dawn of War system. It's not a strategy where you build bases, instead it's based on capture points, but your capture points won't allow you to build buildings or anything, instead they just allow you to requisition additional units and all of your units will be requisitioned from a single point. You can, of course, uh, if you have a trouble with an enemy who's sending a lot of armor in your direction, for example, you can take your soldiers and you can take the armor spawn endpoint, and then you'll have denied your opponent access to their armor. Now in the campaign, we'll just select continue Welcome to continue to this mission, Major. may as well. But the in the campaign, you've got a wide variety of things. First things first, if you press the backspace button as it's bound by default, you can adjust the speed of the game. So if I wanted, I could set it so that this is running faster than usual. Now this game does run quite well on almost all systems. Lower end systems will of course have to reduce the speed, or reduce the quality on a lot of different things. At the moment I am getting about 24 frames per second, but I've got everything on ultra and it's usually I can't say any points where it's actually dropped significant below. If I wanted to take direct control of a unit, I can do that by pressing the default key of E, which is nice, and then I can deploy my mortar teams, and I can basically tell them where to shell. Now, you can, of course, get full direct control over all of your units. I am basically using a mortar to soften up enemy resistance on the objective, Hopefully get a mortar in on top of that flag, which will allow me to uh, basically send my boys in and all they'll have to worry about is that one specific person on the bridge. Now some cover in this game is destructible, those sandbags you can see down to the bottom left of the screen, those ones are not reinforced. If it's got wood behind it, as a sandbag, it can't be taken down, but if I were to land a shell directly on top, for example, it would probably break those sandbags down. A lot of the different elements in this game are extremely well done. Like you can see, we've just moved in and we've taken this point, you can see that is going to give us access to a multitude of vehicles and position. every time you capture a strategic position it actually will spawn in 
two of these little machine guns. I'm trying to figure out... Ah, there is the second one. So I can send one of our boys onto that point to defend it. And then, of course, I can send soldiers, if I like, into that guard tower to defend it. So we've got soldiers up in that guard tower. We've basically got that bridge locked down. And if I wanted to send in infantry to take that point, I could send my boys along down that way. I could send them around the side. If I wanted to, like, there is so much I can do in this. And the soldiers act with a great degree of autonomy when you're not controlling them. Some of them will function pretty well without, like, my machine gunners, for example, are doing a very good job without me having to tell them to shoot the enemies. It's basically, once an enemy gets within range, they will automatically do that. I, Okay, these guys are deployed, so I can start firing in mortar shells here. And these guys just sent in a lot of soldiers to reinforce that point. But my mortars are explosive, so they're going to be able to take out a lot of them. Enemies die very quickly in this if you hit them with the right counterpoint. Soldiers are weak against everything, from bullets to explosives. You can use anti-tank grenades from some of your soldiers to take out things like enemy armor. But at the same time, you have to appreciate that the enemy have access to all the kind of equipment you have access to. And right off the bat, the enemy will have an extreme advantage because they're spawning in tanks right from the very start. They've got fortified defensive positions right from the outset. But that doesn't mean this game is impossible because it will, it will give you a good degree of freedom, pretty much, with the things you can actually do. It looks like that guy is just going to refuse to die, so I may as well just requisition some infantry and tell them to go attack that straight off the bat. I don't know why he's not using that heavy machine gun to eliminate the soldiers who are running in, but okay. Now, requisitioning soldiers will take time. If you spawn some in, you can see along the left side of the screen here, you've got things like 20, 20, 20, all these guys take 20 seconds before I requisition them after the first time. That doesn't go up, by the way. It's done in such a way that 20 seconds is the maximum point you will have to wait for those infantry to spawn in. No, I'm just going to wait for our objective to get taken, and we can send two of our soldiers in here. You'll notice as I hover over cover, it comes up with these little silhouettes. These are cover points, and your boys will be able to use cover points quite effectively. Now, you can see we're getting flanked here by a bunch of soldiers coming from up that way, but at the same time we're protected against soldiers from in there. Your guys will pop up over cover to try and attack an objective. Since I've got more soldiers and I'm playing on easy difficulty just to show you guys what it's like, I can just tell them to go straight in on the point. I can also spawn in a tank because the enemy now have an armor platform right there. So I would be best to send one of our soldiers. Okay, wow. Um, yeah, that tank, I'm not even sure that tank particularly cares. I could use my mortar. In fact, you know what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my mortar. If I land a shell directly on the tank, it's going to cause damage to it. Splash damage around it is very minimalized since it's a heavily armored vehicle. But, fortunately, the hull on that was damaged, and that's pretty much killed everyone who would attempt to take that point. And while we've got that tank defending it, we could bring in an AT gun and we could bring in an anti-aircraft artillery. Now there are no aircraft which they're going to be sending in against us, but Reinforcements have arrived. it's an extremely Those effective anti-infantry point. I can use my paratroopers to destroy that tank. Since it's got a limited cone of fire, I can just basically keep throwing frag grenades at it and wow, the shell knocked my guy onto his back, which is kind of unfortunate, but also really cool. 
Now if I wanted, I could also send one of the Maxon anti-aircraft guns to this point, and I could send an anti-tank gun to there. And it is very important because the enemy will try to counterpoint your assaults. For example, these soldiers you can see are running and they're specifically going to try to take our objectives. But since we've still got this machine gunner here, fortunately, we can just tell him if we wanted, we could take manual control, pressing control, or we could take permanent manual control by just pressing E, but you don't have to actually take direct control for your units to be effective. Now you can see that right there is our victory point. I could drop boys right in on that there. I'm going to see what it's like if I was to drop the unit directly into the victory point. Okay, yeah, that didn't... It didn't go particularly fruitfully for my guy. I wonder if I was to drop one in there. Would that turn out any better? No. Oh, wow. I think it actually might have done. And can we drop more soldiers in? Are we allowed to take this objective? No, but at least we'll be able to use anti-tank grenades to take out the explosive ordnance they have. We can take out their nebel verfers, or if we wanted, after we've killed the infantry manning those particular weapons, we can just send our boys in to control them. And your units, as they get damaged, you have the ability to tell them to heal. You can tell them to do that quite simply. You can also tell them to throw frag grenades and all using all these different keys. It'll be good for flushing enemies out of cover. Wow. Are my guys actually... Is this going to be how quick this match is ending? We have captured a strategic position. We've captured a strategic position. Is that... Okay, wow. I'm genuinely wondering if they're going to attempt to retake that point. I hope so, because otherwise that would just be slightly unfair to them. We could paratroop some of our boys in here and hopefully take out the control of that flat point. Wow, he came in outside the actual objective. He's outside the map, and as such we can't control him. But, it looks like the enemy are just going to be rather content to keep firing away at him. Which is weird. Okay, they've actually managed to take that point there. I wonder, can we tell our boy... Oh, they... yeah. How many do we have left? We've got four paratroopers left. Which I suppose is something. Plus we've got a defensive position set up by all of these guys. Which is nice, we've got a lot of people coming in there. But, fortunately, an aircraft gun. It's a big, massive quad cannon. So, I can just leave him to work of his own accord. If any tanks attempt to take that point, they'll just get completely destroyed. And I can just send some infantry and tell them to directly attack that point. And... Yeah. Sometimes your boys won't be particularly smart. You can also notice that he's reloading this weapon, and if I was to select, say, that there, he's got access to 50 of those shells and 3 of those. Now, those are 50 armor piercing and 3 high explosives. This guy has access to 2,489 more rounds, and ammunition does play a key point in this. Your mortar shells, if you keep using them against enemies and all, you can quite simply run out of mortars and you can restock from supply trucks and all we have captured a strategic position i feel like that their anti-tank weapon needs to be taken out okay yeah that didn't particularly work i wonder if i switched it to a free game speed could i tell him to drop down there okay they're firing on our actual thing. Right, he could throw an anti-tank grenade at that, and hopefully he will actually, if he decides to throw it... Wow, 
Why is he not doing it? He he knocked himself over with his own explosive. Did that destroy it? No. But it at least gave my soldier access to it. So he could use it to take out some of them boys if he so wished. Although it looks like since there's only one of them manning it, there's no point in even attempting to do so. So I may as well just throw another anti-tank bomb at it and destroy it. Is this genuinely not going to get destroyed? Wow. Um, well, okay, apparently he doesn't want to destroy that weapon because God knows why. But I suppose that's fair enough. If he wants to leave that there, he can leave that there. I guess he won't be punished for it, apparently. I also forgot to send our boys onto these here and a infantry machine guns. Now you can see some of them are running slowly. You can tell them to sprint by double right clicking and sending them to a point. I could tell him to sprint up this way by just double right clicking and he should sprint directly for that cover. It's probably going to take some fire but it's probably going to be slightly minimalized. Now he's got cover against these boys here and these guys are concentrating their fire on him. So if I wanted, I could drop in another soldier to here. And while these guys are attempting to react, they've got, yeah, okay, never mind. Well, I took out some of them at least. That's a thing, you know? If you can't get them all, at least get some of them. That's a philosophy which apparently exists. Now, as you get more and more points in the game, like these stars, for example, you'll just get access to more and more stuff. And it comes points later on where you'll unlock machine gun, or you'll unlock the ability to call in airstrikes, you'll be able to uh, call in heavy armor, you'll be able to call in artillery vehicles at some points. And... Um, some of the artillery vehicles and all are incredibly effective at what they do. Oh wow, these boys never actually even... Okay, I wonder if we sent one soldier onto each of these things. So we've got access to two machine guns. We could tell one of our anti-tank guns to move up to there. We've got a soldier who is trapped there. I wonder would he be able to throw an anti-tank grenade over the fence? Yes, he did. Unfortunately, it didn't land on the tank because it moved. But something is shooting at that tank anyway. What is? Oh wow, a gun from all the way down there is firing at it. So his main gun is damaged, so you can see he's down to using his coaxial machine gun. If we wanted, we could press control and take direct control over where he's going to fire. You can see that little circle indicated his accuracy, and on large targets like tanks, your accuracy is less important, but if you're trying to shoot into a group of people, but your shell could go right over them, you really want that pinpoint accuracy, or at least as small a circle as humanly possible. So we can send more infantry. That must be where that second infantry group came from. Must be guys who are not actually who got distracted on their way to there. So we can tell them to move up to there. Just tell them to sprint up because, you know, survivability of these guys is quite high because we're playing on easy difficulty. But that doesn't mean on easy difficulty you won't lose strategic points if you're careless. You still do need to be careful with who you're sending where, and if you tell your boys to do stupid things, they're going to do stupid things. You can tell them to take cover, of course, and while these guys are attacking all of them, I wonder would we be able to throw a frag grenade in there. Well, he's just took him out, and now we're capturing the objective. As long as you have at least one person on an objective to capture, you're grand. 
We have captured a strategic position. Okay, so we've got access to three different machine guns now. So we can send one of our guys. You can also use your middle mouse to change the angle which you're working at. Position. You can go for the real traditional top down. Or if you want, you can have a more angular overview of your objective. You can even change it so that you're looking out into the city. But sometimes the game will get quite laggy if you're staring out into the city. And it's just a large point which you're trying to view. Do we have an anti-tank weapon still? We do. Yes! That right there was a perfect shot from me. I just control clicked and fortunately was able to manage to take him out rather simplistically. If we tell our boys to attack and to move towards that objective, their attack moving now. Must be rendering a lot of particle effects and all because starting to get lowered frame rates. Not abominably low, but close enough. <laughs> wow, they genuinely did that. Okay, so it looks like we're taking this point, which hopefully will mean we're able to use... Does it give us? Yes, we've got access to airstrikes now. Airstrikes can be extremely useful. But sometimes they won't attack right where you want them to. If they spot high value targets before they reach a certain point, then they'll probably attack them as well. And if it's not in their bombing run, they just won't do anything. The rockets they fire are quite high splash and all. Like It will take out a lot of where you're aiming for, but not all. But, since we've got our boys actually associated there... Oh yeah, one thing I should note is you can't click in the minimap and get it to skip to a certain point. I should actually mention that, because it's kind of an important point of it. Now, we could send in... anti-tank gun. I don't want to send our boys out to fight that tank though. But it looks like the tank is actually coming to them. We managed to injure some of the crew. And, oh, I guess we took out some of the main crew. So that tank is essentially out of commission. Our boys are acting with a reasonable autonomy. I am going to send an AT gun and a Maxon gun up to there. Do I have the range to actually take out that? Reinforcements have arrived. I do. Okay, all those damage on that. That's alright, so I've got no more armor able to attack those points. I don't know why our soldiers weren't actually doing that. I think your soldier has a line of fire. Like, what they could see and what they can't see. And that does play an important part on what your targets, when you will auto-attack targets, things like that. I really hope this is going to work. Because I think that's my last... No, that's not going to work, because I didn't even realize there was a tank there. Can I grenade it? Reinforcements have arrived. Wow, I... One paratrooper just took out a tank. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all she wrote. Wow. That's incredible. So we can send our boys up to capture that. We can use an airstrike. You can see we've got MP. It says 14, 15, or 1500 out of 2000 MP. That is your uh, military points. It's basically what you use to requisition Airstrike infantry, etc. Every unit you call in, like a sniper would cost me 200 to call in. Anti-tank infantry is 50. It'd cost about... Um, to send in a tank, it'd cost a fair amount if we were going for a M10 Wolverine tank. We could go for the Sherman, the Chaffee, the M... Is that MI6? No. That is the M16. 
I'm guessing it looks like that there has an anti-air gun built into the back of it. Which means it would probably be an effect of anti-infantry anti one. Heavy ways we could call in the M4A3 E2 Jumbo. Any tank which is named Jumbo was alright by me. Ah, oh, man. They're attacking our soldiers. Reinforcements I wonder could I get him to crawl and actually successfully survive long enough to throw an anti-tank grenade onto that. Yes, he did. And that's actually neutralized their anti-tank weapon. We have captured which is really position. nice. Oh wow, that soldier is good. He just took a pile of them right there. And it's just saved our progress. So now we have our machine gun. Oh wow. I think a tank blew up our machine gun. Or something at least. Nope, it was a tank. Oh wow. I never even noticed that one. Oh crap. Yeah. They've got a lot of firepower there. So I am gonna airstrike that point. And hope that those tanks get eliminated by my airstrike. Because they've just actually captured our third line of defense, or one of the points in our third line of defense. And I've sent a big counterattack against us. Now I don't think there's a way to eliminate the enemy being able to spawn in stuff like tanks. I think they'll be able to do that right up until the end. Unfortunately, but... Oh well. It just means we've got to play smarter than the AI. Reinforcements have arrived. Yes. Enemy tank is destroyed. Yeah, they've got a big counter offensive coming. And we may lose some points. Which is going to be obviously detrimental to what we're trying to achieve by pushing our way up through their defenses, etc. But at the same time, it might be alright. We might be able to send enough stuff in to actually make up for our uh, slow momentum, shall we say. Or rather, our complete reversal of momentum. Because it has actually reached the stage where... They have control of this now. Have arrived. And I don't know why, like, it seems to be that if you send a lot of boys up to an objective and they encounter some kind of fire along the way, they're just going to stop dead in their tracks. Which is a little bit irritating. Definitely. Wow, he doesn't actually have any form of anti tank weaponry to take them out with. And that guy is dead. But I think, we, yeah, the driver got sniped out of that vehicle. Wow. Oh, crap. Yeah, I'm calling in an airstrike because I don't want them having access to artillery defensive. I think their airstrike artillery incoming. at the final line, once you've blown it up, cannot be repaired. If you just kill the operator on it, then they are going to send more operators in. But that doesn't mean for definite. Oh crap. Yeah, I've I've lost the gunner on the tank. Awesome. Damn. What the hell just happened there? Okay, this is the first time I have ever encountered this. Wow, we've we've just encountered a game breaking bug. And 
One thing I will say, I am going to have to end the video as a result of this, but one thing I will say is that this is the first time I have ever seen any kind of problem in this game whatsoever. Normally it runs completely bug free on absolutely every system I have tried to play it on. Unfortunately in this instance it just looks like something has gone horribly horribly wrong. So I'm gonna have to finish this video up here but ladies and gentlemen my name is XPC Reaper. We've been looking at Men of War Assault Squad. Do not take this as an indication that you should not buy this game. I would wholeheartedly recommend this game to everyone. This is the first time I have ever encountered any form of bug whatsoever in the game. This game is available on Steam. The sequel has actually recently come out as well, Men of War Assault Squad 2. I haven't purchased it yet, but it is going to be the next game which I actually buy. I'm probably going to end up buying it at the same time as StarCraft 2. Um, yeah, I know, I haven't bought StarCraft 2 at this point. I am not a strategy fan, apparently. I really should have, because I love strategy games, but I just haven't bought StarCraft 2 yet. But this game right here is an incredibly entertaining game. It's a lovely game of rock, paper, scissors, but it's... It's a game which I would recommend to absolutely everyone who enjoys a strategy game. Because this is just strategy at one of its most fun points. So thank you very much for joining us. This has been a library card. We will have another video up tomorrow. And I know it doesn't look good for this game, but please buy it. The online community, unfortunately, has sort of withered a tiny bit. But this is a genuinely tremendous game. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a comment if you want to. You can also like, subscribe and share our videos. Every like, subscription and share we receive is greatly appreciated from absolutely everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. I will see you next time.